Today, we're going to talk to the whole card porn scamming situation once again with what appears to be two more instances of 86 flea scenarios that need to be looked at a little deeper because, you know, with information that has come to date in recent days, this is getting um, more alarming and more crazy the minute we go, and these things all need to be looked at quite closely. Now, if you're not sure why 86 flea needs to be assessed, so specifically when it comes to this person, one is the alleged owner of card porn, is that Darren Revolt wrote an article a few days ago that talked about a scam that actually happened here in Sydney, not too far from me, actually, maybe 10, 15 minute drive from my house, where Juan allegedly sold this guy a box of 86 Fleer that was fake. And the, the way the scam goes is that Juan basically purchased three boxes of 1983 Olympic cards from BBCE, which seemed a bit strange. Now, Steve Hart, the owner of BBCE, once hearing about this scam, sort of clued onto what might actually be happening because those boxes that Juan bought are actually the biggest thing you can buy from BBCE store that was wrapped at the time. So what the allegations are here is that he took that wrapper, took the example that BBCE have of their certificate on their website, printed it off, wrapped this 86 flea box and sold it to this guy for 150 grand, which is, you know, not a small number and it's quite a shopping, shocking scam actually. So when you're seeing the lengths that somebody might go to in that instance, you need to start looking, okay, what else have they done, you know, potentially, and what else are they associated with when it comes to 86 flea boxes? And we get two pretty clear scenarios that I want your help on to dig a bit deeper. And this is mainly for the second one. But the first one, very quickly, it was pretty interesting that someone tagged me in this on Twitter the other day that, you know, with the famous, you know, Ken Golden break with Drake, where they busted up in some 86 flea boxes, which was, you know, a fantastic watch, I must say. I enjoyed it at the time when it did pop off. But Ken made an interesting comment in the video. I'm going to play it for you now and then clarify. I will say this was a BBC wrapped box. And they did say it was an unopened 86 Fleer box. Where, where, who's got that wrapping? Just want to, who's got that wrapping? Okay, no, 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 the um, little th sticker on the back. Uh, that hit, came uh, hit, this put, way. Put that. And it went this way. I and think Clark Horn took that. Dominic Wilkins. Where is it then? Leah, let's just show that. Because there was a lot of GI jokes in the comments. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. let me, um, <laughs> so. This was the way, you see where GI jokes get you tonight. <laughs> now, as you can see, it's actually pretty funny that one card point apparently tried to steal the wrapper and the sticker from BBC mid break, which was, you know, very, very interesting. And not many people talked about this at the time. I remember some people joking about it being a, a resealed box or somebody trying to keep it to try and reseal it in the you know future. But um, given what we now know about that scam that occurred here in Sydney, and like I said, not too far from me. That looks very, very, you know, skeptical, very strange. And I think it's pretty clear that, you know, if the allegations are true, but that scam that occurred here, that's basically what he was trying to do with that, which, again, is crazy to me. And that's going to be something that probably goes to some of these lawsuits that, that are going to pop off, you know, in, in the near future that you, you know, assume would be popping off because that um, is a little sketchy, obviously. Just basically try to steal something in, in broad daylight. And I'm, I'm surprised that no one in the room clocked onto it at the time maybe because so much stuff was going on, which is pretty fair, but I just thought that was a pretty good catch and, and kudos to the people that actually found that. The thing that I want you guys to help me out with a, a bit further relates to the women in the hobby break that occurred at the 2022 National. Now, it's been hard to find information on this because everything was essentially on Cardporn's you know, page. It's now obviously been deleted, but I vaguely remembered Cardporn going on a, on a rant at the time nothing got enough credit for this basically all the hard work that they did to put this break together for women in the hobby didn't really get any support from sponsors or anything like that they basically put up everything and, and the reason why i'm talking about this is because you know one of the things that they broke in that break was an 86 flea box and it stuck in my brain so i did a lot of research and i finally found some footage you know not of the break but some you know pre-break footage and i i want you guys to help me get to the bottom of this now essentially nabs nubs is one of the guys that helped with the break, and that's how I sort of found this information because what I could find on Google basically said, you know, Candyman and um, card porn, Nabs Nubs, Nabs Nubs being Candyman. Basically, in the text you can see there, it's going to be an epic rip at National Card Show with Sam Nubs, Kenzie Sports Cards, Kristen at PC, Sarah Layton. Special thanks to card porn for making dreams come true, which is a very interesting comment. Now, the reason why this stuck in my mind so much is because. Um, I remembered card point one going on a rant at the time, basically talking himself up, big noting himself because he got his back in an arc in an arch because people were sort of downplaying the whole thing. And he wanted to take credit for this fantastic thing that he did. And for those of you that would have frequented in that page, you know, that happened often, right? He seemed to basically get on his pedestal and point down at people all the time, but also 
bring as much credit and, you know, respect to himself as he could. And his ego basically got in the way because this, you know, stayed in my mind. I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of it. So I found this stuff, which is, you know, I'm pretty thankful for. But it, it's an interesting one because, again, it goes to what we t- talked about previously. Given that you saw what he tried to do in the, in the Ken Golden Break, given this alleged scam that occurred, you know, here in Sydney, given some of these other things that this page has done, not to mention with this fraud case with the, you know, whole fake Michael Jordan um, jersey and the whole charity thing, this now needs to be questioned. Now, I, I, I cannot confirm whether Cardporn sold this box to this person. I've tried messaging them. They've not seen my DM. So if you know this person, please try and get the information for me because this could be another case of a fake 86 flea box that's been sold to someone. And the reason why it's interesting, because if Cardporn did sell this to this individual or did sell it to a sponsor for that event, they've basically frauded or defrauded that person out of money, right? And it needs to be looked into the same way that any single other product that Cardporn had sold to someone in the last couple of years, or even further back, basically did. Because it could be another case of fraud. It could be nothing, but we need to look into it. Everything is tainted, as I talked to the other day. Now, the one thing I want to talk to pretty quickly is, you know, from what I can see in this video that Naz Nubs recorded, um, the box and the wrapping looks identical to, to the auction that it was bought from back in 2017. Now, does that mean it's fake? Does that mean it's been altered and tampered with? Um, or not, I should say. No, it doesn't. It could have still been tampered with, but it does look like all the BBC logos are in the exact same spot. It looks like the box has, you know, the, the sticker in the same spot. It looks like the, the serial numbers and all that sort of stuff is identical. So maybe it wasn't tampered with. Maybe it's not a problem in the first place because Naz Nubs owned the box and won bought it from them for use within the break. Who knows? But I think this needs to be looked into. So if you know Nasnubs or you know somebody associated with this, please try and get to the bottom of it because, again, everything needs to be questioned now. And I think it's just a, a pretty curious one. The only reason why it stuck in my head is because I remember talking about it at the time, thinking, did we have another dodgy 86 flea box out at the National? Because if you guys recall, this is the same National where Whatnot had that infamous break where the first one looked a bit dodgy, so they re-ran it. And Cardporn wasn't associated with either of those, but... This also occurred at the same time, and I remembered, okay, is this another one? And I'm fairly certain I talked about it in a video, but I went back through all my videos at the time, and I couldn't find anything on it. I looked at other people's videos at the same time. Again, couldn't find anything on it. But it's just a, it's just an interesting one that I think we need to, to look into a bit further. So if you have any information, please share it down below. I just think it's pretty freaking wild. Everything needs to be looked into. Like when, you, when you're going to the lengths that this person allegedly did to scam this person in Sydney, right? I talked about it um, I forget which video, but I talked about it recently where, you know, for you to go and scam someone like this and go, it was it basically the trade went down at a local McDonald's here in Sydney and the guy had his wife there. So for you to, you know, scam people over the internet, like when it's faceless and anonymous, it's sort of, it's not accepted, right? I'm not trying to say it's accepted or downplayed or anything like that, but, you know, the level of scumbag behavior you have to have to scam someone anonymously, it pales in comparison to do it to somebody's face and to go into this store and basically sell this box to someone for not a small chump, chump, chunk of change, right? 150 grand, do it while his wife is there and trying to play it off and cool and all that sort of stuff is just freaking wild to me. So when you've got someone so brazenly trying to scam someone like that, per the allegations, um, who knows what other things they've done, right? And the fact that they've tried to steal a sticker and a wrapper on camera, the fact that they're associated with this break out at the National, so much so that when they were talking about it on their page, they were big noting themselves so much, trying to get so much clout, getting angry at people, pushing back at people, trying to say they were the greatest gift since sliced bread. Um, I, I think we need to look at it all. So if there's anything else that you guys want to look into or want me to, to flag in a video, please let me know because this is getting more and more wild. I just wanted to bring those two things to your attention because like every day there's more information coming to light. This is so freaking crazy. This is definitely the worst thing that's ever happened you know, to this hobby. And I, I think it's fair to say that even when you've had things like the PB, pwcc allegations in the past you've had the mastro incident the trimming incidents the the mexican cartel involvement with some of these fake psa slabs and those soccer syndicates like that stuff is bad but this is so wild it's so ingrained this guy had his fingers in everything i've got my thoughts about how he was using his page to try and strong arm people and and there's more to that that i want to talk to in a later video but i wanted to share this you know with you all today because it's it's wild, and I'm repenting myself now, but please share your thoughts down in the comments below. Let me know if you think there's anything else. Let me know if you can help look into this one. Let me know if you can help get to the bottom of this with Naz, Naz Nubs, because again, I'd hate to state that this box is implicated when it had nothing to do with Cardboard other than Cardboard maybe sponsoring it. But please don't jump the gate just yet. Let's look into it, get an answer, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one, hopefully with 
um, some less scams coming to light from Cardboard because I hope we've seen the last of it, but I don't think we have. So, cheers.